welcome. Well, this is going to be a lesson on producers and consumers. Now, producers and consumers um, are talked about as the first part in understanding the uh, interactions within ecosystems. Uh, they are the basis of those interactions because what we concern ourselves with or focus ourselves on is the energy flow throughout any given ecosystem. So that's where we're going to start uh, with this lesson is producers and consumers. Since this topic really helps us set the foundation for understanding uh, the relationships within uh, an ecosystem, especially as it pertains to uh, the energy flowing through an ecosystem, we should bring up the term trophic. Trophic refers to feeding or eating, and that's what these relationships are all based on is this idea of feeding or eating. Um, might seem pretty br brutal when, I, when you start thinking about it. Uh, there, within an ecosystem, there is a hierarchy of eating or feeding, and we're referred to that as being trophic levels. And so as we talk about producers and consumers in this video, uh, keep that in mind. We're, we're going to try to relate that back to this idea of how um, all of them relate together in, in terms of the hierarchy of eating or feeding. So let's start with producers. Uh, producers are organisms within an ecosystem that get their energy from sunlight. Well, they don't get it right from sunlight. They obviously need a process to convert the sunlight into some chemical form of energy. Uh, that process is called photosynthesis. and It creates a molecule called glucose, which in turn gets broken down and uh, then it gets released as energy for living things to use. Now, producers, because they can do that by themselves, they produce their own energy. So they're called producers. We can also call them autotrophs. Now, troph means to feed, auto means self, so they're self-feeders. They're able to do that by themselves. So those are the producers. Let's see some examples. So here's some pictures of some producers. You can see they come in various sizes and shapes and forms, but they all have something in common that's they are taking in the sun in producing these uh, molecules of glucose um, so that we can use them as energy. Uh, ranges inside from these big large redwood uh, trees all the way down to the phytoplankton and the algae you know, that live in water. Um, all of them are important food sources for our food chains and food webs within our ecosystems um, and they all hold that same role of taking in sunlight and converting it into chemical energy. All right, so those were the producers. Now we're going to move on to consumers. Consumers consume things, which means that they are the organisms that need to get their energy from eating other organisms. Uh, they can't, they're not like the producers where the producers can provide themselves with the energy. Consumers have to go out and get something else. Um, just like in uh, the producers, we call them autotrophs here, consumers, because they eat something other, other than them other than themselves, uh, they're called heterotrophs. Hetero means other or opposite of themselves, and trophic means to eat. So we can call them heterotrophs as well as consumers. There are four main types of consumers, uh, carnivores, herbivores, omnivores, and decomposers. Uh, sometimes we call them detritivores, and there is a slight difference, but we're going to classify them together as one type of consumer. So let's take a look at the different types of consumers and see what they're all about. We'll start with carnivores. Carnivores are consumers that eat other consumers. Uh, they're the ones that everyone remembers in an ecosystem because um, they're the ones that are most visible. They're out there eating other things. It looks cool um, as, as other organisms hunt other organisms. It's something that we definitely relate to. You can see some of the examples of carnivores on your screen. Sharks, wolves, lions, hawks, those kind of organisms. Next we have the herbivores. And herbivores are those consumers that eat the producers. And they only eat the producers. As you can see in the screen what the, some of these um, herbivores might look like. Uh, you have insects that are eating just plants like the grasshopper. You have rabbits and squirrels and tortoises and koala bears and zebras and elephants and horses and deer. And there's a lot of herbivores. Some of the world's largest animals are actually herbivores. Omnivores. Now, omnivores are consumers that can do both 
uh, what the con carnivores and, and herbivores could do. They, they can consume uh, other consumers and they can also eat the producers. Uh, some examples of omnivores would be the raccoon. Um, a lot of the bear species of bears are omnivores, uh, eating fish and, and other wildlife as well as berries and leaves. Uh, and the red-breasted red robin, as pictured here, and you can see a lot of those in Minnesota, um, as well as us as humans, we, we, we are omnivores. And the last type of consumer is going to be decomposers and detritivores. Now, for our purposes in our class, uh, we're going to classify them all together as decomposers, even though there are some slight differences between the, the meanings of those two words. Um, basically put, though, they're consumers that are going to specialize in eating living things that have died, um, such as the mushrooms and the other funguses, bacteria, um, all types of bacteria, as well as organisms like the earthworm. Those are all uh, specialized in breaking down living things that have died. And that brings us to the end of this lesson. Uh, we did just a quick um, overview of, of what producers and consumers were and, and why they are the foundation of all these interactions within our ecosystems.